to the Word today. If you have your Bibles, open up um, your Bibles to John chapter 15. And if you didn't bring your Bible, it's okay. We're going to put the scriptures on the screen as well. And I won't be before you long because the beauty of summer breeze is that we get to enjoy summer, right? So I won't be before you long. You won't have to do a time check or a cell phone check. It won't be long. But I hope that this, um, what God has given me to share with you will encourage you as you go along your way. So we're going to read John chapter 15. And I'm going to start with verses, verse, I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, but I'm going to read this from the Living Bible. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He locks off every branch that doesn't produce. And he prunes those branches that bear fruit for even larger crops. He has already tended you by pruning you back for greater strength and usefulness by means of the commands I gave you. Take care to live in me and let me live in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit when severed from the vine. Nor can you be fruitful apart from me. So for a few minutes this morning, I want to encourage you along this thought, the connection, life in the vine. So this, it was a, a couple of weeks ago, um, it was, we were celebrating Men's Month in the month of June, and one of the activities that we had for Men's Month was a father-son fish fry. So my husband and son had gone to this, you know, to the father's, um, father-son fish fry, and it was about 8, 8.30, and they came home, and... Um, my son Deuce came to find me in the house, and he said, you know, Mama, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm about to watch Mommy Time. Now, in my house, Mommy Time is code for HGTV. Any other ladies love HGTV, the home and garden television show? That is H. Thank you, Sister Ukin. Y'all got a high five from the back. I love HGTV. And I don't get a lot of chances to watch TV, especially between the months of March and June, because in my house, that's, that's basketball season. And so basketball season was over, so I was going to sneak in a little bit of mommy time. And so he says to me, he said, well, I'm going to go get my pajamas. I'm going to come back with you and watch Tiny House Nation. And then maybe you'll watch PJ Masks with me. And it shocked me because I have never articulated to my son that I like Tiny House Nation. I've never used those words. I've never talked in detail about the show with him, but he, he didn't say Mommy Time or HGTV. He specifically called out the exact name of the show that I actually was queuing up um, to watch. And I said, look at this little boy thinking he knows his mama. <laughs> look at him thinking he knows what I like and he knows my preferences. And I end up chuckling and I said to Dee, how does he know this? And as clear as day, I heard the Holy Spirit say it to me. He said, it's because he abides with you. Y'all talk about a prostrate moment. I feel like God uses my relationship with my son so much to teach me about him. In other words, God was saying that he knows things about you that you've never told him because he lives with you. He's in the same home with you. Where you live, he lives. And where he lives, you live. And so there is an intimacy and a connection that comes from just him living in the same house with you. And so when we think about that in this scripture, my first point is that you must live and abide in him to produce for him. Because you can't produce fruit for somebody you don't know. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, another word for our home is abode. And if you really think about it, our houses and our homes are a place of intimacy, aren't they? Our homes are a place of closeness because we know that whoever you live with, they get an uncut, unabridged edition of who you are, don't they? And so we get particular about who we bring into our houses, don't we? We can be honest, it's true. So if I came to your house today and I showed up on your front porch, Hopefully, it's because you trusted me enough to give me your address. Even who we give our address to is a sign of closeness. And if you think about it further, if I let you come in, because right now we have people, you know, people are running for elected office and they may knock on the door and I might open the door. Well, first of all, I'm going to look through the blinds. I'm going to low-key find out who you are. And I might talk to you through the screen. 
But if I actually open the door and allow you into my house, that's another level of closeness, isn't it? And if I let you come into the living room, and then we have these, we have what I like to call curated parts of our houses, don't we? Your grandmother used to teach, she used to say, there's three areas you need to keep together at all times, your living room, your dining room, and your kitchen. Anybody else have a grandmother like me? Those were spaces, because those were community spaces, right? And so if I allow you into my home, and you come into my living room, or you get to come into the kitchen or the dining room, or you get to come on the back porch or in the backyard, that's the level of closeness. But we all know the unspoken rule is, don't you go in the refrigerator. <laughs> and don't you go in the cabinet. Because that's reserved for a level of closeness that we may not necessarily have. Right? And then if I let you come into the upstairs part of my house, we're probably related. Because <laughs> upstairs is not curated living, isn't it? Think, think about how some of us left upstairs coming to church, right? It's clothes everywhere, hangers, it might be some fruit roll-ups on the, you know. Upstairs is another animal, so I, if I let you come upstairs, we probably family. And you can use my downstairs bathroom or my half bathroom, which a lot of houses have, but if you get to use the upstairs bathroom, you my sister. <laughs> we real close, because it's going to have flat irons and rollers and hair gel, right? I might not have cleaned out the tub just yet. So I need to know somebody that's coming in the upstairs bathroom is no judgment zone, right? We even build our homes for progressive, um, for progressive intimacy. How many of you would say, I will never have a ranch house, because that's too much access on one floor, right? Absolutely. And so here's the thing. When we think about abiding in God, God is saying, I don't want just access to the curated parts of your life. I don't want just access to the main floor and the living room and the kitchen. I want access to the uncurated aspects of your life. I want access from the front door to the back door. I want inner recess access because the kind of fruit that I see you producing, we're going to have to get real intimate to do that. You're going to have to get intimate with me. You're going to have to let me into the inner recesses and the crooks and the crannies and the unkept areas, the junk drawers of your life, and I want you to be that intimately aware of me. Here's something else. So God wants un unrestricted access in us living with him. But there's something else that God wants from us. And there's another point. Point two is that we have to beware of becoming an unproductive or unsupported fruit producer. We have to beware of becoming an unsupported fruit producer. You know, in this passage of scripture, we see three stages of branches. So we see branches that are just starting to bear fruit, just starting to be in this abide relationship with God. And then we see branches that are bearing fruit. And I've looked at this scripture so many times in different seasons in my life, and I've heard it so many times, but for the first time, I saw it in a very different way. And it was that word bear that leapt up at me. And that word bear means to be able to sustain or support without sinking or yielding. So when you think about that, if you're going to be a fruit producer, if you're going to do tremendous things for God, if you're going to produce fruit for God, you've got to be able to carry some weight. You've got to be able to carry some weight. You have to be able to carry some things and sustain some things without sinking or yielding. So there's a video that's out right now. Some of you may have seen it. It's trending online, and it's called the Stanky Leg Video. Has anybody seen this? And it's a picture. It's, it's like a weightlifting fail video. And it's a, you can Google it at the church. It's a picture of a young guy, and he has this barbell, and it's got all it's stacked with weights. You know how people like to, it was like the, the weight, there were more weights on this bar than it was him. So he picks up this bar, and he has the bar like this. And he looks like he's going to be OK. Oh, must have seen it. But his legs. And so they put the, the song to Stanky Leg to the video. Because he's looking like he's strong, but his legs are going in every direction. And every time I watch the video, I get convicted. Like, that is me without Jesus. <laughs> that is exactly how we look. There is no way I can lift the things that God is calling me to lift without him. And I know that some of you in this room, some of y'all have all these southern roots. You know, I'm a newly planted gardener. 
But some of y'all come from roots where you grew up planting vegetables and fruit. And you understand that some fruit has so much weight that you got to stake the branch in order for the branch not to collapse from the weight of the fruit. Anybody ever grow tomatoes? If you grow tomatoes, what do you have to do to that branch? You got to stake it. Because tomatoes are so heavy that if you don't stake it, that, that it will collapse. The whole first row just hit just like this. My neighbor right now, my neighbor Tom, um, I love my neighbors. He is growing grapes in the heart of the city. In 49507, this brother is determined we, he going to grow grapes, and I love it. So I have been low-key watching Tom the last couple of weeks. And he has been spending so much time building this frame for his grapes. Now you can see he has started the grapes, but he understands there's no need to focus on the grapes if the structure ain't strong. So he's been spending all of this time building this, and I've just been watching him build this architecture to support the grapes. So fruit producers in the room, God is more concerned about you as the branch than the fruit you're going to produce because he knows when you get weak, the fruit won't matter. It won't matter. And we're all fruit producers because all of us, you volunteer and you serve and you lead and you run businesses and you direct stuff and you're managing stuff. So you are a fruit producer. But if you are not strong, if you are not supported, the fruit of your hands won't matter. And we live in a world now where people define your value based on what you do. But God never did that. God says, I give you value because of who you are. When Adam missed it in the garden, Jesus, and God didn't come up to him and say, why do you name the orangutan that way? He didn't do that. He said, where are you? I gave, I love you. I bled for you. I'll leave the 99 for you. You matter to me. So you got to be supported. We have to be supported. So I've been thinking about this. How many of you carry a charger with you? Any kind of charger, like a laptop charger. Raise your hand, it's okay. Laptop charger, phone charger. Right? What are some of the other chargers you have? Anybody? Other chargers you have? Pocket stick. It's okay to talk to me. <laughs> Kindle chargers, iPad chargers. Okay. 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 So we all have something that we're charging. Okay. How many of you, when you're using your devices, you keep it plugged in? You just, like if you're using your laptop, you just keep it plugged in. Even if it's at 100%, you just keep it plugged in. Thank you, Ev. I see that hand. Yes. So you keep it plugged in. Okay. How many of you have a car charger right now for your cell phone? A car charger in the car, on your person, in your bag. Okay. What is the lowest you typically let your phone get? 50%? What else? <laughs> 3%? 55%? Some of y'all teenagers know it'll never get past 100%. I see y'all. Okay, so how many people say, I don't ever really let it get past 50%? Just show of hands. You don't ever really let your phone. 75%. How many people say, I kinda, it kind of get low? Okay, 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 okay. One. You said 1%, one, one okay. 1%. Anybody drive a car that you have to charge? Anybody got an electrical char car that you charge? Okay, so I see electrical car. Okay. Here's the thing. Have you ever realized that we give more attention to the charges that's in our laptop bags, wallets, purses, bags, car driveway, than we give to how much we are charged? That we spend more time, we don't even let our technology get low. We keep that stuff charged up. So we have a cell phone in my purse that is at 100%, but me as the owner, I'm at 2%. My Mac computer will be at 90% and I will show up and trying to be a fruit producer in community and on my job and in my business and I'm at negative 2%. I give more attention to my devices than I do the state of my soul. 
on the regular. Y'all, this ain't just summer behavior. This is on GP behavior on the regular. And so we wonder why I'm struggling, why I feel low, why I'm hurting. Because we understand with our devices that if there is no connection, there is no operation. And if there is no operation, I have to recharge. I have to get back with the master connection so that there can be operation because I need connection in order to function. So, fruit producers in the room, how are we expecting to produce and to function when we aren't getting back with the master connector to recharge and replenish so that we can produce fruit? It's the reason why it is. It's why it is. And see, the thing, and I have to pause because, you know, I know that God been getting me with this for a couple weeks now, so I can share the love with my family a little bit. Because here's the truth. When you're a fruit producer, so we're talking to branches that produce fruit. When I look around this room, I see faces of people that do tremendous things in their homes and in community in this congregation that I wouldn't be standing here if I'm, I glean from the fruit of your life all the time. But so I'm talking to people that have been able to be strong and you've been able to bear weight. You've been able, you're often the first call for help. People don't call 411 or 911, they call you. And so I'm talking to people that you produce fruit. And so here's the thing, when we're in the space of being an unsupported fruit producer, that decline does not happen automatically. Just like with our devices and our cell phones, it doesn't happen automatically. It is a gradual decline. So the thing is, when you've been used to being a fruit producer, you have the ability to do what I call being high-functioning and unwell. If you love and lead and serve anybody, if you're a mom or a dad to anybody, you understand that I can be high-functioning and unwell. Some of us got out the bed today, we didn't even want to open our eyes, and you got up, you cooked breakfast, you got everything ironed, you got everybody dressed, you got everybody out the house, and you just as low. You go to work, you cried in the car, got out the work, slayed the board meeting, got back in the car, picked up your tears, and nobody knows. Because you know how to be high functioning, even when you're hurting. And God is saying that the kind of fruit I need you to produce and the kind of fruit I envision you producing, you got to stay synced up with me. So I thought about it like this. I said, well, how will some of the signs, how will I know? Because our, you know, our devices give us, they may turn red, we get that little battery meter, or our, you know, we might get a, um, an, an audible sound that those devices make when they're getting low. So what are some of the signs? that we can start to identify in our own lives when we're getting low. So I, have a, I want you to think about this. Imagine that right now I had a recorder. And this recorder was, would have auto playback. And it would play back all of your thoughts from this week, everything that hurts you this week, the emotional paper cuts in your life from this week, the disappointments and the stressors and the triggers and the hurts and the rejections, the unforeseen circumstances, the mistakes, the aches and pains in your body, and the overwhelming moments from this week. And that's just from your life. Because as a fruit producer, you know you carry your life in a whole bunch of other people's lives. So then add all of the phone calls and the text messages and the emails with people telling you their hurts, their stressors, their overwhelming moments, their, their anxieties, their issues, their needs, their emotional paper cuts. And we all understand that the more operation that happens, what happens to our batteries? Not only that, but when you run certain apps on your phone, it diminishes quicker. Like when Deuce wants to download these video games on my phone, I can be at 86% and after an hour of play, it's at 24%. Because it takes more battery. So think about all of the things that have taken battery life from you this week. Things in your life and things that you've inherited from the people that you lead, love, and serve in their lives. Now ask yourself, 
How many times did I sync up with the vine? Are my sinks greater than my withdrawals? Because any time there's more withdrawal than there is deposits, I'll always be on E. I'll always be on E. And we understand this in so many other areas of our lives. We understand this in our bank accounts, right? Because if I keep swiping that card and my swipes exceed my deposits, that account not only ends on E, but what else happens? NSF payments, ugly letters from the bank, possible closing and shutting down of that account. How might we be shutting down? Because we're demanding and we're letting other people demand from us so many withdrawals and we have not made adequate deposits to sustain it. We have to beware of becoming unsupported fruit producers. And I know that's hard because I know that we live, you know, I always think about the story of Mary and Martha that we live, we're trying to live like Mary in a Martha world. If y'all remember that story, Martha was so busy doing all these good things and Mary was just sitting at the feet of Jesus and it looked like she wasn't doing what was needful, but she was. And so sometimes the business of our lives is good stuff, it's good work, but it's making me on end and it's making me an unsupported vine and I'm collapsing all the time and God is saying, I, don't, I care more about you than the work. So our vine time matters. I call my vine time, that's my I will be okay time. It's where God can put his hands on to all my life to reinforce the areas that have gotten weak from all of the withdrawals that's been taken on my life for that week. As I've been watching my neighbor Tom, as he's starting, his grapes are starting to grow, he's reinforcing parts of his structure so that the structure will not collapse, so it can bear the fruit. And people that are strong really need this. Because often the strong, strongest ones of us, we never get... People don't ever look at you like you ever go through stuff. Those of us that are strong, people don't ever respond to you like you struggle and you get weak and that you have vulnerable moments and that you have fragile spaces in your life. So more than anybody, we need this. Sometimes the strongest among us are the most emotionally neglected among us. That's why we hear stuff like, check on your strong friends. Vine time matters. You know, we had a master gardener in our congregation in Mrs. Mary James, and if you're new to our congregation, you might not have met um, uh, Mrs. J, like I love to call her, but Mrs. J, and um, before she passed away, she had given me some flowers, and they, I planted them in the front of my house, so in this summer, I always um, finally remember her because it reminds me of that relationship that we had. And um, I was recently talking to Mr. J, and we were talking about her and her life, and he told me a story. He said, and she was a master gardener. If you've ever saw her iPad or you've been to her house, like, good, I used to be like, Mrs. J, can I please send this to good housekeeping? And she would be like, nope. You know, she, she, y'all know Mrs. J was like, mm-mm. Um, like, I let you in my space, but I ain't that little house in a bowl thing. And so Mr. J was telling me the story about her, and he said that there was this one point where um, they had been out in the yard doing things, they used to do things in their yard together, and he said lightning, it just it was a huge thunderstorm, and lightning was coming in, and he said, I ran in the house. And he said, I looked out the window, he said, and Mary was still out there, and she was trying to protect her plants. And he said, I was looking at her like, it's lightning. He said, I'm talking to her through the window like, it's lightning, like, I ain't going back out there, but I'm going to talk to you through the window about this lightning. And when he said it, Tears came to my eyes because I believe that that's what God as the husband he is like with us. That as branch life, branch life gets tough and lightning shows up in my life. And I am so glad that God rushes in when other people rush out. I am so glad that God is not afraid of the lightning that's going on in my life. But when those, everybody else rushes out, he comes in to make sure that I'm okay. And so I need buying time because lightning is going to come. But when God shows up in my life, it reminds me that I'm going to be okay. And not only am I going to be okay, but I'm going to thrive. That this lightning can't take me out. 
So I need time in the vine. I need time with my husband. And I need time with the gardener. Because he knows how to keep me from falling. Here's the last thing. The last point is that the gardener's handiwork cultivates. The gardener's handiwork thrives in cultivating your potential. So we see that we saw the three classes of branches. There's newly branches that are just starting to bear fruit. There's branches that are bearing fruit, and they need to be aware of not being unsupported to be connected to the vine. But we hear this third class of producers. And it's producers that the scripture said, those that have been bearing fruit, you get pruned so that you can produce even larger crops for greater strength and greater usefulness. So the truth is, God sees potential in you and me. And God sees capacity for greater strength and greater usefulness. In other words, God sees greatness in you. And so part of this growth and grooming and pruning process of us as branches involves two critical things, and that's vision and confidence. Vision and confidence. See, vision is what I see, what God sees about me. That's vision. But confidence is me actually believing that what God sees about me, I can be or I can do. I'll repeat that. Vision is what God sees about me. But confidence is me actually believing that I can be, do, or achieve what God sees when he looks at me. And you need both. Because we've seen in scripture examples of people that had vision and no confidence and they got nowhere. Y'all remember the children of Israel when they first went and saw the promised land, the 12 spies, y'all remember that story? And they got vision. God said it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And they went out to check it out. And they said, it sure is. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. They brought back samples, had to have two men carry the grapes. But they said when it came, so they had vision. But when it came to confidence, what did they say about themselves? I'm a grasshopper. They had vision, but they had no confidence. And because they didn't have confidence, they went 40 years in the same place. See, God can give us vision all along, but if we won't believe what he said that we can do and we can be, we won't go anywhere. Matthew chapter 5, I'm going to mess with y'all a little bit. Matthew chapter 5 says, you are the light of the world. You're a city that is set on a hill and you cannot be hidden. So we get a vision of ourselves as the light of the world. But when we sing about ourselves being the light, how do we sing it? This little light of mine. Y'all seen the meme of the sister with the natural and she doing like this? Like, I'm like, show me where it say little. Where's, show me where it says little. I know that's our vacation Bible school theology. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. My grandma sang it that way. My great-grandma sang it that way. That's how I'm teaching the kids to sing it. But y'all, do anybody, go to Matthew 5, does it say little? It says you are light on a hill. You are the light of the world. That sounds like a big light to me. But we've been so socialized to think little. We've been singing about little. So when God gives us big dreams, our confidence is that little. So what do we do from the dream? I run away. I shrink at it. Because God can't no branch with my deficiencies do that big dream. But I'm here to tell you, we got it backwards. The vision is right. I just got to get my confidence in alignment with what God has been saying about me. A friend of mine posted this on social media. It has been blessing me. I cannot afford to have a thought in my head that is not in God's head about me. So I've been trying to say, I've been trying to say, like, I ain't gonna sing that song with little no more. I know I might be the only one. Y'all don't look at me on Sunday if we sing it. I'm trying to reprogram my thoughts because I got a little one I'm raised, and I want him to be raised, ready to run with the visions of God that God has given him in his heart. So mama got to reprogram and re-socialize the way that she see herself. God has big vision and big fruit production in his heart about you. So we got to
to get our confidence up. So I'm looking at my ladies. Are we okay with the video? Okay, okay. So you know, there's no way to live in my house and not be a sports fan. I'm coming down to home stretch. I actually think D reads sports stats to me at night when I sleep so that I'll remember sports stats. <laughs> and until I can figure out what the Pistons are going to do, um, I have some fan favorites in other places. And I tend to like players, you know, so we talk sports a lot in my house. And I tend to like players that are quiet storm. I love players that they're unsuspecting. I don't want, you know, I, I know that uh, Sister Carla got on me today because she was like, she's LeBron all day, new Laker fan all day. <laughs> and no hate to LeBron, but, you know, I don't want you flashy and flopping. Okay, I, I know, I didn't, y'all gonna come talk to me after church, it's okay. I like quiet storm players. I like players that are unsuspecting and they just steal the show. So I like Kawhi Leonard, he's one of my favorites. I got some of the Kawhi Leonard fans. I know that he toggles, I like James Harden, and I like Steph Curry. <laughs> I like Steph. I like Steph. <laughs> I like Steph. And I recently came across something that made me like, and I like Steph, I like Aisha too, so that's kind of why I like Steph a little bit too. But I like Steph for another reason too. I came across his 2009 talent scout report. And it's really interesting to see his rise to the NBA. You know, now he's heralded, and I know we could probably get into some sports debates. He's heralded as one of the greatest players, greatest shooters of all time in the NBA. Not the only Sister Carla, but he's one of the greatest, right? He's one of the greatest. And what's really interesting, though, is that when you look at where he came from, he went to Davidson, which was not a big Division I school. It was almost like a no-name Division I school. And so I found his 2009 talent scout report. And when you look at what they said about him, I'm going to read a few things, and I'm going to show you a quick video. There was an NBA talent scout that looked at him, and this is what he said about Steph. He is far below the NBA standard in regard to explosiveness and athleticism. He will never be a great finisher. At 6'2", he is extremely small for the NBA shooting guard. He can never be one that would run a team. Watch this video. We working on it. Give us a second. <laughs> he said, oh. Rev Reese said, I bet you the LeBron video will be working. <laughs> <laughs> the new Laker Nation runs deep in the new hole. <laughs> we'll try one more time, see if this works. Steph Curry with the shot. Zero to a hundred. Stephen Curry, 6'3", 185 pounds, position, point guard. Stephen's explosiveness and athleticism are below standard. He's not a great finisher around the basket. He needs to considerably improve as a ball handler often struggles against physical defenders. Stefan must develop as a point guard in order to make it in the league. He will have limited success at the next level. Do not rely on him to run your team. Like this is my new theme video. When I watch it, I just get this part of me that just get hyped, like, yeah. Because <laughs> the truth is, Steph ain't the only one that people have played small. 
Some of us in this room, people played you small, thought you wasn't going to be nothing, told you you weren't going to be about nothing, told you you would never do nothing, you wouldn't graduate, you could never, you will never be. And so if you're going to produce fruit for God in this season, you're going to have to keep your confidence connected to the vine. See, that's another thing that happens in our vine connection because we under, and I was talking to Dee and we were debating it and he said, well, Shannon, some of the stuff they said was true. And I got happy, I said, yeah, but people, everybody got deficiencies, but look at them now. And see, for some of the people that's been saying stuff, you're going to have to let your fruit speak. Right. You're going to have to let your fruit speak. Right. But you're going to have to live, I mean, this talent scout, I read a report that said that, that they hope that that scout has been fired. Everything that they said he wouldn't do, he did it and then some. And so your vine connection is important because God does not have small thinking on his mind about you. So you got to protect your vision and your, and your confidence. Your vision and your confidence in this season of our lives goes together like peanut butter and jelly. It goes together like Frankie Beverly and Mays with the white baseball cap. It goes together. you got to have both. You need your vision and your confidence. Because you cannot afford to let the talk of other people contaminate your branch. You cannot afford to let what people have been saying about you and, and their small thinking about you contaminate your fruit. It was an NBA scout that said those things. There's some people's words that don't lodge, but there's other people's words about us that somehow lodge. And if we don't uproot them, they will grow. Those plants that Mrs. J gave me the other day, I went out to water them and I noticed that there were some weeds that were hiding under the, the, of the shadow of their leaves. And that's sometimes how those words happen. You'll look like on the outside you're okay, but there's words that's growing on the outside and it's going to overtake them. And so I have to get in there and start digging out those things so that it wouldn't contaminate what I was growing. You are incubating something that God has put in your heart. And so you've got to weed stuff that's not what he's been saying about you. You've got to spend time in his presence so that he can show you things that's maybe that's been planted and help you uproot those things and help you to rehearse what he's thinking about you. Now when I watch Steph Curry play, I see it in a whole different way. And I love when I see him throw those heat check threes. You know, he'll just keep his wrist up there and I'm like, yes! That's how we got to be. Lord, I'm going to step out in faith and I'm throwing heat check threes and I'm trusting you to do the rest. I'm going to let my fruit speak. And then I'm going to run back and be with you in the vine because I was afraid to throw the three in the first place. I still struggle to believe I'm going to hit the next three. And I don't want to get confidence in my three life and it end up like this again, so I need to stay connected to you. I'm so glad that God is not moved by my deficiencies. That he can do his best work in me even in the midst of my deficiencies. And part of what happens when I'm connected to him is that he's working on my deficiencies. The same thing that they told him was a liability is actually his strength. So as we close, I've been finding in my own life that some of the most powerful self-talk that I can say to myself every day is, Lord, here I am. Lord, I'm going to stop thinking little. I need to be rehydrated by time in your presence. Like, time in your, I know I'm busy, but I can never get too busy to spend time with you because when I don't spend time with you, my battery life gets low, and I cannot support and sustain this fruit that you're doing in my life by myself in my own strength. I will falter, I will faint, I will fatigue, and I will die. And I don't want to look like I'm externally producing and I'm hurting. I've been saying to the Lord, Lord, I'm ready for vision and confidence. The Lord, prepare me to be what you envisioned me to be. Support and strengthen me, Lord, for what you have in mind for me. And I am light and there is nothing little about it. So 
in this moment, what are some of those self-talk conversations you need to be having about you? I heard Steve Furtick say it this way recently. He said, we need to spend less time listening to ourselves and more time talking to ourselves. Especially when we find ourselves in no matter what seasons, because I believe those are spaces where the enemy knows you on, you on the verge. You on the verge, girl. You on the verge, bro of doing miraculous things for the kingdom of God. And so I'm going to try everything I can to shake your game. But today we're telling the enemy, my game is unshakable. Because greater is he that's at work on the inside of you. I want to pray for you as we go, as we close. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Lord, you know you have brought all of us from such a mighty long way. Lord, the fact that we are standing and breathing is literally a testament of your faithfulness. A testament of resilience. A testament, Lord God, of your grace and your mercy. And you didn't bring us all this way and through all the muck and the mire that you have brought us through to fail and faint and fatigue now. I pray for every branch in this room, no matter what age, no matter how long we've walked with you, I ask, Father, that you will help us to continue to abide in you, to give you access to all parts of our lives. Because we can't even begin this fruit-producing process apart from you. That we would allow you to see into every aspect of our lives and we will hasten to your throne when branch life gets rough. I pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that every day, that we, every time that we go to charge a laptop or a cell phone or an iPad or a Kindle or our cars, that we'll be reminded of this message. And that we won't spend more time and energy hooking up our devices more than we hook up our souls to you. Help us not wait until we're on E and that we're shaken to come to you, but help us to stay at 100% because we hasten to you. And Lord, some of us, I know we are on the brink that you've been ministering to us and talking to us about using our lives for greater. I pray that we won't be afraid, that we won't run from the vision that you're planting in our lives, but Lord, we instead we say, Lord, help our confidence. that we might be everything that you've called us to be because we know our lives are not for our own. There is somebody who is connected to us saying yes to you. So here we are, Lord. And we say yes. We say yes to your will. We are, Lord. And we say yes. Thank and praise God for that awesome word. For I hope you really took heed for God said in his word and through the message that he is the vine. And you are the branches. If you abide in him and he abides in you, then you will bear much fruit. But apart from him, we can do nothing. If you have seen yourself in this message, if you feel like Minister Cohen said that you have in those no matter what days or that no matter what week or though or it seems like your life has been in a continual state of no matter what and the lightning has been flashing and the thunder has been roaring and you've been missing that connection 
now is the opportunity for you to be reconnected to our Father. So we ask that our, <clears throat> excuse me, as our decision time counselors come, this is the time where we offer, well, we don't offer, but we extend the end of discipleship. For God has sent his messenger on this day, and we have truly been blessed. For God shows us the way back unto him. If you've been disconnected and you desire to be reconnected to the body, this is your time. If you feel as if all the things that you've been doing have not been bearing the fruit that you desire to see or that you feel that God desires to see in your life, God is saying, reconnect to the vine. Come back unto me. Because truly, without God, we cannot do anything. The things that we desire to do, even those things won't be fruitful to the, uh, to the full potential unless we are connected to that source. Because if we put more trust in in electronics, we put more trust in the ways and the systems of man, and we forget those simple truths that God has given us to sustain us and keep us and, and make sure that we have what we need. If you need that support, or if you've been disconnected from, your, from the body of Christ, this is the time for you to be reconnected. Again, I'll echo the words that I said last week. Don't be like I was in my foolishness when I was young and thinking that I'll, I'll come unto God when I get myself together because God already did the work for you. Just like the fruit doesn't bear itself, but it has to be a manifestation of that vine. And outside of that being connected to that vine, we cannot bear the fruit. For there is greatness in each and every one of you. God desires greatness out of each and every one of you. God has purpose greatness in each and every one of you. And it's up to you. As Minister Cohen said, God has already, God has already planted the vision. And now it's up to us to walk in that confidence, walk in that faith, walk knowing that God has called us to do great things. Don't doubt you, but put your faith and your trust in God. Turn your attention to the screens. We'll have our announcements. Good day, New Hope. Here are your announcements for the week. We're proud to announce that we've reached 29 new disciples. This includes 19 under Christian experience, one rededication, and nine candidates for baptism. Remember, each day is a new day to point someone to Jesus by being a light in the world. Summer Breeze is underway. Now through August 26th, Sunday morning worship will begin at 9 a.m. Here's what you can look forward to for the next two weeks. On Sunday, July 15th, it's Faithfully Fit Sunday. Dress comfortably and be prepared to move. There will be a light, interactive fitness demonstration during morning worship, as well as a fitness expo featuring healthy living tips and fitness challenges. On Sunday, July 22nd, represent your squad Sunday. Come dressed alike as a family or besties. You may also represent your favorite sports team or alma mater. It's always nice to discover the connections between the people we worship with. Win this. Did you bring a guest today? Make sure they complete a Summer Breeze guest card and drop it off in the cooler in the narthex. This is a different card than the one included in the visitor's welcome packet. First time visitors can do both cards. This year's family day is on Sunday, July 29th, and we're doing it family reunion style with food, fun, and fellowship. To get ready for family day, we need you to do two things. One, order t-shirts in the narthex directly following service. Orders are due no later than next Sunday, July 15th. The cost is $7 per person. We ask each family to bring an item. Please see the insert in the bulletin for your family's respective item and then sign up in the Narthex following service. Vacation Bible School is right around the corner. Beginning July 30th, 
you'll be able to experience OT Live, a walk through the Bible, with guest facilitators and classes tailored for both adults and children. This Vacation Bible School is something that the entire family can enjoy. The cost is $1 per child and $5 per adult, with a maximum of $10 per household. Sign up in the Narthex today. If you have questions, contact Deacon Eukenya Hunter or Sister Victoria Likely. The theme for the youth and children's ministry for the month of July is AMP. Our memory verse is, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1, 6. New 70 plus club inductees will be celebrated at the Senior Banquet on Saturday, July 28th. Family members of the new inductees and all who are 70 and above are invited to attend. If you have turned or will turn 70 in 2018, please complete the information sheet in the narthex and place it in the burgundy box no later than next Sunday, July 15th. Questions? Contact Sister Diane Schaefer or call the church office at 616-452-4278. The Women of New Hope are hitting the road again. The United Conference for Women will be held October 19th through the 21st at Kalahari Resort in Sandusky, Ohio. You may obtain information and sign up in the Narthex starting today. For additional information, please contact Sister Sylvia James. Getting a cancer diagnosis or any other serious diagnosis can be both scary and devastating. This isn't a journey that you have to take alone. Join the Conquerors Support Group on Tuesday, July 10th at 6 p.m. in the resource room. This support group is open to all dealing with a cancer or other serious medical diagnosis, as well as supporting family and friends. Remember, you are not alone. This concludes our announcements. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. You can also check out our webpage at www.newhopegr.org. And if you would like a copy of today's service on CD or DVD, you can go to the media window and make a purchase for $5. Have a blessed and wonderful week. Amen. Before we dismiss, um, you know, we've got a lot of different things going on this month. Uh, each Sunday has a particular theme. This uh, Sunday was uh, Greek Sunday. So I want to just take a moment before we dismiss to uh, do a little short roll call. Uh, and so we can acknowledge uh, those members uh, who chose to support and represent their uh, Greek organization. So would the members of the greatest, uh, the oldest, and the coldest, uh, the first of first, the greatest fraternity on this planet, uh, the men of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, please stand. Oh, six. That's what I was hoping. Nice. I was hoping Gary wasn't going to do that, but I appreciate you, bro. I knew, I knew somebody was going to do it, but hey. I, I told y'all last Sunday, I was like, who you with? I knew it was, I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you. Would, would the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated please stand? All right. See you, Sorority. All right. With men of Right, y'all go ahead and do your, go ahead and do your thing. Go ahead. I'm so, look, look. I, I waited, y'all. All right, all right. Now, this this next group of fellas can be a little rowdy. So y'all y'all, um, if they bump you, don't don't. Uh, no, I'm just joking. Would the men of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated please stand? See? <laughs> All right, so you get the bark and folks get scared. They're like, what's going on? What, what just happened? No, we appreciate you, brothers. Appreciate you. 
the women of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. Please stand. My sisters, you got to love them. Got to love them. And Zetas, Zeta Phi Beta, Sorority Incorporated. There we go. There you go. Represent, sister. Represent. Men of Phi Beta Sigma Incorporated. All right. Iotas. All right. Sigma Gamma Rho. And I promise you, uh, what, did we? okay. All right. I'll see you in the back, sister. All right. Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I didn't do that on purpose either, bro. I, yeah. <laughs> I saved it. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll go with that one. <laughs> we'll, go for, we'll go with that. <laughs> Any other Greek org organizations represented? Greek letter organizations. Okay. I'm with you. Which I am also uh, an alumni member of. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. And we didn't want to just limit it to the Divine Nine, so that's why after um, everyone else, we, we acknowledge everyone. Any, any others before we dismiss? Because I know they're going to be like, look, this is church. Y'all in here acting. Now, now, before I forget, on, we want all of you to be with us on our family day, or on our picnic as well. Uh, so we want and invite you guys to come out uh, to celebrate. I was I told last Sunday that we're, we're kind of like the entertainment, so we need to get fellas, uh, cues, get that, that bio-freeze, get the knees lubricated, because y'all gonna have, I know you got one more hop left in you. And so uh, we wanna, the same with us, we got to get them, we got to get them, you know, take some of that, uh, what is that, glucosamine, get them joints lubricated. So that way when we get out there just for, just for the stroll and that, that one last stroll, everybody's got one in them, they hold it, reserve it just for that day. So we want you to be in fellowship with us. Come back next Sunday as well. We're having a Fit, uh, fit for Christ Sunday. Be dressed. Uh, we're going to have push-up challenges. We're going to have several challenges. So I'm going to give you my workout next Sunday, Mike. My, uh, I don't know where that came from, but brother letting me know I'm kind of losing it. He was like, you owe me a workout. So, yes, sir. I got you on the push-ups uh, next Sunday. Let us stand. Let us link up with someone. Christ God, our Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day. For truly, it is a blessing and an honor every time you allow us to come into your house to worship you. Father, we thank you for the word that went forth. We pray that it will find itself in good ground, O oh Lord, that it will rise up within us, that we will be reminded, O oh Lord, that, that you are the vine and that we are your branches and that it, we need to and we have to stay connected to you, Lord God, that we are be recharged, rejuvenated so that we can bear the fruit that you desire for us as your children. Father, as we leave this place, we uh, pray that we leave not your presence, that you would go with us, that you would keep us, shield us from the evils of this world to seek to uh, separate us from your love. And Father, we'll just be mindful to give you the praise, give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' my